MVC stands for Model View Controller. It is an architectural pattern for implementing apps with user interfaces and is sometimes also known as Massive View Controller, which I'll get into later. So let's take a look at this diagram of the Model View Controller. First of all, in the bottom left, we have the model. The controller updates the model and a model notifies the controller. Next up is the controller, which will update the view and the view will send user actions back to the controller. So let's go and take a look at each of these items individually and see what they mean. First of all, the model. The model is where your objects lie and things such as networking code, passing code, and so on. Next up is the view. The view is the actual screen and elements on the screen the user can interact with. So things such as UI labels, text views, buttons, and so on are in the view. And finally, the controller is the glue that holds the view and the model together. It allows you to connect up a view to a controller. The controller doesn't care what the view is and you can connect, connect up one or more models to the controller. So let's take a look at a quick example of something that will implement this and then we'll go and do it in actual code. Okay, so let's pretend we've got an app we have to build and the app will show a veterinarian information about animals. That could be a dog, a cat, a fish and so on. So let's pretend first of all we have a dog class which we want to represent a dog group. A dog can have a name and a number of legs in our class. So this dog class lies in a model. It is an object. Next up the view would be the actual user interface that displays the dog name and the dog number of legs. You just have your labels in here in the storyboard and they will be connected up to your code as outlets. And finally, to join it together, you'd have a controller and the view would connect up to the controller. The view would go, I want a dog object. The controller would then set up a new dog object and they say named Fido with four legs. And this dog, dog object, which is in the model, would then be returned to the controller the controller would then return that to the view with any additional information it might want to add to it and finally display that to the user. So that's MVC in a nutshell. It's quite confusing. So let's go into coding it now and you'll get a clearer idea of where everything actually lies and how it all joins together. All right, guys, so I've got a new single view application here, a brand new Xcode project, and I'm just on the storyboard screen. And in a model view controller, this storyboard is a part of the view. So we're going to drag some labels onto there to represent our dog, which a vet can view. So just drag on four labels to the screen. The first one, we're going to name it name. And then we're going to do name here for the second label. Finally, the last label, the third one, we'll do is legs, and then we'll do legs here. Once that's done, go to the assistant editor in the top right. Okay, and we're going to connect up name here as a pet name outlet, and legs here as a pet legs outlet. So once that's done, close that down. We're going to go to the view controller and implement our model view controller code. So although it's in the code, these pet name and legs are still a part of the view. And just up the top here, we're going to create a new class, which is of a type dog. It's going to contain a name variable, which is of a type string optional. And finally, a legs variable, which is an int optional. So this dog class here is a model. You ideally 
would not have it in the same class as a view controller, we would create a new Swift file named dog.swift. I've just got it here so you can see it all in one view as an example. So what you would do is go file, new file. You create a Swift file called dog.swift and you'd place this class code into that file and that would be a part of the model. The dog is a model. So the controller is, as it says, a part of the view controller. So what we're going to do in a view did load, we'll do let Fido equals a dog, do Fido.name equals Fido, do Fido dot legs equals four so we've got a dog named Fido with four legs if I will do pet name dot text equals Fido dot name exclamation mark and pet legs dot text equals Fido legs for backslash on brackets Fido dot legs exclamation mark so that will convert that into just a string and we're done so this code here all in your view controller is a part of the controller except for the two labels which are a part of the view so let's run that app to see that in action okay so we can see we have an app here with our Fido dog with four legs so that's how you implement the model view controller. I just saw a screenshot of the code split up into the different areas. So you can actually see where it lies in your MVC pattern. So you can see here on the screen now, we have the dog class, which is a part of the model. The labels, which are a part of the view that connects to the storyboard, which is also a part of the view. And finally, the rest of the view controller code, which is a part of the controller. So you can begin to implement it in your app now, and you may have already actually used this pattern without even knowing it, because a UI table view actually implements this pattern. So that's pretty interesting. One issue with this is though, that most people get too tempted to put all their code in the view controller, including the view and the controller. And this is why it sometimes gets called massive view controller. So you want to try and avoid putting every bit of code you can in this view controller. You want to try and keep it separated, although it's tempting to do this. So you can download the source code for the app below. And in another tutorial, I'll cover the MVVM pattern, which is to try and avoid this whole massive view controller situation with a thousand lines of code in one class.